Welcome to Bothering the Band. My name is Ryan Beinick. With me, as always, is Abigail Ann Levy, the producer of this shindig. Abby, say hi to people. Hello to the people. <laughs> we have a fantastic episode today with Eric D. Johnson of Fruit Bats fame. Man, we've been listening to this dude forever. It is a dream come true to have him on the pod. We will be seeing him in Nashville as well. This is silly, fun, enlightening. Ladies and gentlemen, Bothering the Band with Eric of Fruit Bats. Hey, man. Welcome to Bothering the Band. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, We are so thrilled to have you. Uh, We're both, like, just huge fans. And when uh, you, some press release popped up in our, in our, email and we're like well give this a try and it worked sweet i I told my publicist i like to do podcasts like i sort of enjoy it's like my favorite uh type of uh thing to and now like there's a lot of them so um, yeah it's like yeah yeah but i don't say yes to all of them so and yours looked cool so oh well thank you i mean we we think ours is cool it is definitely a little bit different um, we hope our dumb questions help to break down the walls just to get our, you know, our favorite musicians talking. That's, you know, that's the basis. So sweet. Yeah. Uh, my name's Ryan. This is Abby. Um, I, we're ready if you're ready. I am ready. Fire away. Okay, cool. So uh, we always start off by saying, how are you and where are you? Or actually, hold on. I should say, what is your echo location? My echo location, that's very good. Um, I am in my house in Los Angeles, California. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you're, are you, aren't you about to go on tour or in the middle yeah. of a tour? I'm going, I'm actually going, I'm, I'm flying to a quick little Bonnie Light Horseman thing tomorrow and then coming home for like a week and then I'm going on tour forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Which we will be attending. Sweet. Where are you going to, where will, where are you, will you be attending? What town? Okay. So, oh, go ahead. I jumped ahead. Ryan's mad now. I, I jumped way too far. You ahead. threw me we'll off. Be, we'll be in Nashville. Oh, sweet. That's going to be awesome. We will be at your show. Um, we already got tickets. So. Yeah, dude. Uh, we are doing a show in Nashville as well. Um, the day before your show. So we're, yeah, we're stoked. Uh, we're, we're doing a live version of this with a couple of people. I don't know. When do you get to Nashville? I get to Nashville. It'll be like, you know, that morning. Or that something. morning. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool. We'll, we'll wave at you from the crowd. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're very stoked. Very stoked. Uh, do you have a balcony in your home in Los Angeles? No, I don't. I do not have a balcony. That The song, The Balcony, is um, sort of about, it's actually about the balcony in my grandma's apartment that is like a it's not about that but that is like a common dream location of mine um she lived she's actually my aunt my grandma's no longer with us but my aunt lives there so it's like been sort of the the one dwelling that has been in my life for since i can far back as i can remember so it's about about being a kid sitting on that belt very cool. As you'll see, some of these questions, while while very stupid, uh, also some of them tie into song titles, album titles, and whatnot. I'll have answers for all of them. <laughs> awesome. And there are no wrong answers on bothering the band either. So, while you're sitting in your in your Los Angeles home, sans balcony, if you could teleport anywhere in the, anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? I wouldn't go anywhere. I like I, because I'm about to be all over the place. So, um, yeah. I mean, what do other people say? Paris? Um, I, yeah. I, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm about to go so many places. So I would, per, uh, if if there's an option to not hit the teleport button, I might, um, I might exercise that that option and just stay here. I think that's a good sign of of happiness and and contentness. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe if I was, if I'd been, if I was like stuck here for a lot, like if you'd asked me that in like May of 2020, I probably would have had all kinds of interesting answers for you, but 
Yeah. <laughs> it just would have been anywhere. Yeah. Right now I am I I'm actually about to actually teleport. So I'm going to I'm going to wait. Here we teleporting all over the place. Yeah. Um how do you describe your music? Um I well in like the um I try not to <laughs> because i've been doing it for so long it's it's kind of just me like when like a cab driver or something asks me like uh like they see the guitar and they're like oh you play music or what like an uber driver or something i'm always just like it's singer songwriter music or something like, like don't want to over explain it i think my in my um my like instagram bio for a while it was uh existential makeout music um which i always sort of uh sort of like the notion of that like um yeah happy sad music uh, this is why we ask this question of most of our guests, especially ones like yourself who are hard to pin down yeah. because you have, you know, your early stuff is more of the traditional Amer Americana. And then you, you kind of skew this way and go back this way. And then I think existential makeout music is, is going to be a fun thing to read out of context in a, in a little bit. When the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I have to go back and re write the description and read the notes, I'm going to be like, Oh, that's good. That's solid gold. <laughs> Do you have any pets? Yeah. I actually just did a podcast yesterday called rocker dog, where you talk about your dogs. And I have a dog named Pinto. And I talked about him for an hour on a podcast yesterday. I know what I'm doing with the rest of my night and that is downloading that entire podcast. I don't, yeah, it's a good podcast. I, obviously my, my episode's not up yet, but there's some really good ones on there and it's very fun just talking about a dog for an hour. Yeah. Oh, see, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, totally. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Who, who's, was that the dog? That was, that was my wife walking in and yeah. And greeting the dog actually. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. What kind of dog is it? Uh, he's a mutt, just like a 40, 40 pound Mexican street dog, kind of like scruffy. If you looked up the a dog in the dictionary, there'd be a picture of him. He just like looks like a dog. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you mean, though. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, anytime a guest has a dog, Abby, Abby geeks out. This is our, we should have like a, I guess they took that part, but a pet section. Do you ever take the, the dog on a pet parade boom nailed it no um he'd probably be good in a pet parade although he's old now he don't, wouldn't want to walk that long like uh he wouldn't want to be on like a long parade route i don't think no yeah what's the last parade either of you attended or watched i don't think i've been in a I may have may have been blocked in by a parade a couple times and just been like angered that like the street was closed but uh I, could, I couldn't tell you the last time I've been in a parade. It was probably 1988. Does LA do a lot of parades? Because like New York does a lot of parades. They do the Rose Parade, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah, that's Pasadena, though. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. When's the last time you went into a Best Buy? Ooh. Probably, probably pre-pandemic, actually. Like... I don't mind a Best Buy either. I used to go, uh, I remember like in the late 90s, early aughts, I would go into Best Buy and get, it was sort of in the pre-streaming days, you know, I would go and get, buy like the $5 DVDs. Like you would find like a, like so, like Animal House or so, just some kind of like nostalgic movie where you're like, I would watch this more than once at home. So that was my, that was like my Best Buy tradition was like, and there'd be all the guys who were just like, can I help you find something, man? And you're like, no, I'm just here for the $5 DVD. In the bin, too. You got to, like, dig through it and find the treasures. And you're like, just leave me with my bin. Yeah, and there was always a treasure, too. Always, like, something where you're like, like, dances with wolves, thank you, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so 100% true. I When I lived in New York, uh, this is so long ago, in Union Square, there was the Virgin Megastore. I remember I played an in store at that at the. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it closed down more than 15 years ago, but there was a stretch of like may more than a year where it was closing and just all the CDs kept getting cheaper and cheaper. And I was just like, well, every week I would treat myself to a Bob Dylan CD. 
Nice. And so I just sort of kept buying them. and it was like $10 and then they got down to $5 and yeah. I like that you limited it to Dylan too. That's kind of a good like parameter for that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But also I discovered so much stuff that way because I remember buying a Jose Gonzalez CD and the woman at the front was like, oh, you like this type of music? Check out this guy. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Bon Iver or something like that. He's new oh, yeah. like this, you know, like, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. And I bought it like sight unseen. And then like a, two years later, he like blew up, you know? Yeah. Those were the waning days when like the record store clerk, instead of an algorithm was going to be the one to like uh, hip you to something. Yeah. 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 Um, who, what's the last music someone recommended to you? Wow. I'm going off script by the way. Cause I, I've, I'm feeling it. It's often the algorithm uh, recommending stuff to me now. To like, I sort of made fun of that, but I'm like, you know, plenty guilty of it. Just being like, uh, uh, well, that's music someone recommended to me. I don't, I can't, I don't, I can't remember. Like, um, I would have needed this. This is like a, this is an off script question that I would have needed. Like, uh, I need to think about this. Heads up. Well, okay, we'll 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 call your we'll go back in time. Call the publicist. We'll do a whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, the re there was a reason I asked. Oh, so I ha I have personally a habit of any like if someone recommends something to me, I have to listen to it immediately. Like right when I get back home, or if I'm you know near a computer, and someone recommended me something today, I listen to it. They're called Ten Bulls, and they're in San Diego. Really great. I really nice. like them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but like you said, it's not often. So when it ha does happen. I have to like do it right away or I'll forget that being said, do you, as a, we host a music podcast. So it happens to me a lot. Does it happen to you a lot as a musician? Like of people just being like, you got to check this out. I mean, I mean, what happens a lot, which is like, um, is like you, people send you their own record. That's probably the most common thing. Um, which I don't, I totally don't mind. Um, uh, and I, it's, like when people give you CDs on tour, it's really nice, but also like, I'm, I don't have a lot of room, you know, like where I'm just like, don't, don't give me physical stuff. Give me like a download card or something or tell me about band, I'll go to your band camp or something like that. But like, that's, but I, I think, I mean, I, I, I'm still like, I've been doing this a really long time. It still blows my mind that anyone's like uh, interested in like uh, sharing that with me too. I think it's, really really cool so yeah usually it's that it's not so much like hey man i think you might like this um but probably like i get the mo the most stuff is like being on tour and like having your bandmates dj and you know like they have cool taste and everything kind of has like different taste and they have their kind of go like now my my bandmates and fruit bats i know i get like when they're djing you're like oh yeah this is a very josh playlist or something like that and you're, you're like oh that's that's such a brian song or something like that it's like the um so and then you are like what's it's it's like when they're djing and you're like oh what's this this is good you know um that's like that's how i like to get recommendations it's like again it's like the the human algorithm but it's like uh these different people you know kind of hipping you to their whole kind of like journey in their mind of like a playlist or something like that. I love that. I, yeah, I, I love that a lot too. I get it the opposite way where someone will text me like, this seems like a Ryan band and they're always correct. You know, like, cool. uh, so shout out to, again, he gets a mention on this pod a lot. Adam Santiago sends it to me all the time. He's like, this is like a Canadian folk band you'll love. And I'm like, I want to be mad, but I do like them. <laughs> <laughs> okay tell me if you've had if you've gotten this question before fruit loops or fruity pebbles oh pebbles times a thousand and then next question um when's the last time you had fruity pebbles forever ago like a very healthy eater now like i, I would rip some pebbles but like it, i wouldn't it's like where am i gonna find them because i'm not gonna get a a box of them you know and bring them home and like eat however many servings that is of them. But um, I ate tons of Fruity Pebbles as like a, like I think many people did as like a stoner 
because we ate pretty healthy cereal when I was a kid growing up. And then when I was like a stoner, you know, late teens, early twenties, living in early apartments, I, I ate a lot of fruit pebbles. I like, I just wrote this quote. I would rip some pebbles. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What's your favorite fruit since you eat healthy? Um, Mango, um, pineapple. I like in LA, they have the kind of like fruta guys like on the corner who make you this like fruit salad. And then they put it's like hot sauce, like kind of a top and like lime and salt, like a, like beer, almost like that beer salt kind of salt. Yeah. It's like a seasoned salt, right? Yeah, like a seasoned salt. It's making my mouth water just thinking about it, but like sort of a tropical fruit salad like that. It's, it's like usually like watermelon, mango, papaya sometimes it's good. I can see you getting hungry right now. Yeah, yeah. Is it tahine, the spice? Isn't it the salt? It's tahine, right? Yes. Nice. I couldn't think of it. Yeah. Nice. I lost track. The food. This Again, this podcast always devolves into food or shitty television shows. That's like what it always boils down to. That's my whole deal. Okay. Have you ever smashed a pumpkin? Um, no, I, I definitely did a lot of bad stuff as a, like a, like a wayward teenager. Uh, but I never smashed a pumpkin that always felt like a real violation. Cause it's like probably some little kid carved it or something. So, yeah. I never did. Not even your own, like at the end of Halloween, they're like, this is rotten. And you like chuck it at the curb or something. I may, I may have like chucked a, chucked my own pumpkin at some point, but, uh, <laughs> So there's another quote I have to write down. Ripping pebbles and chucking pumpkins. How many? God damn it. <laughs> pebbles, chucking pumpkins. How many cookies do you think you can fit? Or not cookies. Let's back up. How many Oreos do you think you can fit in your mouth? Uh, how many do I think I can? Or how many do I think I would, who, would I want to? Let's go max versus want okay want like two maybe one and i do like oreos um i could probably if i had a beverage nearby because i would be afraid of the choking hazard of uh the dry cookies um but if i had a beverage nearby with some with some uh lubrication uh possibilities i would go i could probably do six does that seem like too many Oreos aren't really that big. I think it's not enough because if you're dunking them in milk and they're getting all mushy, I mean, I think you could go to at least 10. I guess that's the question. Are we talking dry Oreos? or Because if you're dunking them in milk, you could go a lot. I mean, and it's just mush in your mouth. But I think six dry Oreos, let's say. I think six is more than we all like really acknowledge. Like one, if they're dry, especially. Yeah. They're very dry and they get stuck everywhere. You know, also, like uh, it depends on if it's a double stuff Oreo too, which is going to be thicker. Very true. Yeah. Now they have a million like flavors. Yeah, too, I don't. So. I want OG Oreos, and I it, it would just be. I wouldn't do double stuff either. I would just do six normal Oreos in the mouth. All right. Um, so these are red velvet triple stuff. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> Some of the flavors like are re- I'm like, oh, come on. I don't have a sweet tooth that much. Um, and actually the thing I like about Oreos is like the actual cookie part of an Oreo is pretty, is not like sickeningly sweet. It's like, has that kind of like more earthy chocolate vibe to it that I like. Well, let's explore this. No sweet tooth. I'm baffled by you weirdos. Not no sweet tooth, but my go-to like stoner or whatever. Like if I... If I had like the munchies or something and they, it was like cookies versus like Doritos or something like that. I'm going Doritos all the way. I, I, I go salty, savory, over sweet any day. Okay. So Doritos, is that like chip number one? Um, again, I try to eat pretty healthy now, but I like definitely like on tour in a guilty moment of like snackitude, I'll go Cool Ranch Doritos. So all the quotes are snackitude. Guilty moment of snackitude. 
Cool Ranch Doritos. That's probably what Abby's eating for dinner or supper. Where she's at. <laughs> I make fun of her because she eats like a like a 12-year-old stoner kid. You know? I think that's okay. No, it's it's awesome. I wish I could do it. Definitely. It's it, my making fun of her is, is envy, of course. Okay. Eric Clapton or Magic Johnson? Um this says a lot about someone, right? Like if they're more like music or if they're like, I love sports or. I, don't know. I mean, obviously I love music. I like Clapton. Okay. He's not like my favorite. Like there's some, I like the blind faith records. I like some cream. That's about it. And magic Johnson. I like, but I grew up a bulls fan. Like I'm not, I'm not a Lakers fan either, even though I live in LA now. Um, pass, uh, neither <laughs> magic. John I'm going to just say magic Johnson. I'll pose this to both of you is yeah. that I was trying to think of some sort of musician, Eric and someone with the last name Johnson. Yeah. You know, we, we do a lot of these either or questions usually centered around someone's the guest name. How about Eric Idol of Monty Python versus okay. Lyndon Baines Johnson. And I'm going to go Eric Idol. I thought you were going to go LBJ all the way. What about Don Johnson? Um, Don Johnson is my dad's name, actually, um, and uh, and my grandfather's name and my middle name, technically. Um, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, Don Johnson's cool. I love, like, Miami Vice is great. Like, early prestige TV, I would say. Absolutely. So your middle name is, so your full name is Eric Don Johnson Johnson. Eric, Eric Donald Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when's the last time you were on a rowboat? Um, does a canoe count? Absolutely. Yeah. I think I was on a canoe. I don't know. A few summers ago, maybe three summers ago, took a canoe ride. Were you the front, the back? Yeah, I was in the front. The front's the power. Yeah. Yeah, the front's the power, the back's the steering. Yeah, I love being in a canoe or a rowboat. I think I just get stuck with people who don't know what they're doing, so I'm in the back doing all of it. I'm not totally sure I know what I'm doing, but I like I I certainly it I rode it. It like it worked. Yeah. Do, were you going like this? That's the thing. It's like, oh, yeah. No, we were going pretty pretty straight. Yeah. Now, do you sure. want to know why a canoe is not technically a rowboat? Why is no, that some some <laughs> weird mountain term that you're about no, to I drop? A on lot us? Of, I spent a lot of time on rivers uh, because you're paddling a canoe. Oh, right, a ro right. A rowboat is is the double double rows. And I, you know what? I may have never rowed before. Actually, speaking of, so I've paddled a canoe and a kayak, but I've never rowed a boat. So this is paddling the one. Yeah. This is rowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never rowed. I don't know. I feel you on this. I don't know why that makes me angry. Like if it was a, if I was in a different setting and like mixed company at like a happy hour and someone I didn't know said that, I would instantly judge them. But that's why I did it because I knew <laughs> it would irk you. <laughs> uh, I, I like never even really thought of it. I I I appreciated the the pointing of it out. Well, if you come visit Wyoming, we'll get you on some oars and you can row a boat. Nice. I love Wyoming. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Okay. This is my favorite question, but I, I don't even know how to pose it. When COVID first started, did you get, and this is what I wrote, lame ass Wuhan bat jokes? Uh, yeah, like, Sometimes, like, I think, like, more like on Twitter or something, like, no one was, like, texting me, like, articles from Time Magazine or something, but, like, yeah, because, and also Fruit Bats supposedly carried, like, Ebola, too, so, yeah, I definitely, it's a, uh, it's a weird that I have that band name, I've had that band name since, like, 1997 or something like that, too, so, I don't even know what it means anymore, but, um, it's, like, I'm stuck with it. So, but yeah, I do. I definitely get like uh, the Ebola jokes and stuff were more, more common. I think COVID 
especially early on, people were like freaked out enough that they didn't want to like be like, <laughs> check it out. So <laughs> yeah, not, not a lot. Fair enough. That's, I think that's good. Cause I, if I were, I put myself in your shoes thinking of that question and I'm like, that would really, that would irk me if yeah. you will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For certain. And then how do you feel about EDM music? Um, electronic dance music? Yeah. Um, I feel fine about it. Like I like some, uh, and I, it's like, to be honest, I'm not, is that a, um, I wonder, is that an umbrella term for like almost all kind of like techno electronic music or um, is EDM like a really specific thing too? Cause um I love like Aphex Twin, which is like, and uh, things like Boards of Canada, which is like more skirting the boundaries of like ambient music. And I think it's like very beautiful, especially like Aphex Twin is like beautiful pastoral music, like with these kind of like weird skittering beats, but it's not super danceable. I mean, some of it is, but so if that is that, yes. Um, if that's not, I don't even know enough to tell you that I like it or not. So, um, but I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not going to raves or anything like that. I, I hear you. And I, I think Abby probably agree. I, I don't know the difference, but I know that that subculture probably would correct us and be like, Oh, that's why I'm like, I don't, I can't, I can't answer that uh, for sure. But I, I, I certainly like, um, things like Apex Twin and Boards of Canada, which might maybe aren't considered that, or maybe they are, um, that like some like down tempo electronic music, I think is can be very, very beautiful. I think, do you know who Avicii is? I, I know the like, name, but I don't think I've heard that music. That would be EDM and what you're describing. I agree with what you said earlier. It's kind of more like an ambient trance yeah yeah trance or something yeah mm -hmm. exactly i think i'm more interested in that like the the music they put when you're like freaking out on too much ecstasy and you got to go into the like special room or something that's like what i want to listen to all the time i agree i i'm now i'm trying to think of like sub genres of quote-unquote techno and trance acid jazz remember that one house yeah House could be a lot of stuff though. That's like techno almost. Yeah. I have very little genres of music that I am disinterested in though, too. Like I'm 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 pretty like uh open eared when it comes to stuff. But some that I just don't know enough about. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I know uh so much about so much music until someone's like, Have you heard this popular band on the radio? And I'm like, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> I'm like, do you want to talk about like these obscure indie bands from like Portugal? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of music. So yeah. Window or aisle? Ooh, um, that's a great question. So I am, I've always thought about this. I'm spiritually a window person, but, but like sort of ergonomically, I'm an aisle person. Like I, um, yeah. Dude. But that is the best answer I've ever gotten. Yeah. It's like, I want to be at the window, but I don't want to be crammed in by two strangers. Oh, I'm so stealing that. Cause I'm the same way. I, I want to be the window, but I know, I just know my bladder. I know how same. I'm going to have to pee. I usually like to have a couple cocktails on the flight too. And um, I'm not a nervous flyer either. I'm just kind of like, but I have a, I'm a sort of a regimented traveler because I do it fun. So I'm just like, I know myself. So I've, uh, I, I'm an aisle guy. Okay. Let's say your, your wife is with you. What is she, what does she prefer? And, and are you giving it up? Like if she's, I want the aisle, you go in middle. Yeah. I'll do whatever. Okay. Yeah. What a gentleman. Yeah. What a gentleman. When's the last time you flew spirit airline? Uh, I, only one time. And it was recently, um, it was, <laughs> it was in the only time I've ever flown this leg, which is Hartford, Connecticut to Las Vegas, um, which is like, like what, what other airline are you going to take from Hartford to Vegas? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I enjoyed uh, it. It was like a party in the sky. It was good. It is like a party in the sky. 
Yeah. I took it. Um, we did a show in LA last year and on the way back, I took a red eye middle seat spirit from LA to Florida. So just oh, wow, like long. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, uh, I blocked it out. I don't remember. I don't even drink or anything like that. I just, I don't, I blocked it out of my psyche. So. Yeah. Yeah. I would have freaked out. But going there, it was, I remember, I think I like texted Abby. I was like, there's a, there, there was, I, I no joke. I thought I was going to turn around and like there, I was going to see a guy with like a boom box on his shoulder. Cause <laughs> like someone was playing their own music. Yeah. It was like a New York City subway ride yeah. in 1986. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you like this? Mm -hmm. And it was EDM music. Yeah, nice. <laughs> What's your favorite movie score? Ooh, that's a really good one. I think um I have like a really uh pervasive one for me was the one flew over the cuckoo's nest score by Jack Nietzsche. Um and Jack Nietzsche also was like did a lot of the like string arrangements on Neil Young records and so and was sort of like and also made his own surf records and kind of was like the one, I think like one of the first like rock guy, like guy with kind of like a rock and roll background to also do like scores. But that, that score like totally bowled me over the first time I heard it sort of made me aware of like the power of a film score. Um, so that one, um, it's like, I actually kind of went back and referenced the John Bryan eternal sunshine of the spotless mind score recently too, which is just like, scores you can listen to you know like that you can kind of sit down a midnight cowboy was a really big one sort of around that same time as one through the cuckoo's nest that's john barry who's or i think who had kind of a background more making kind of like cool surf instrumental music and then did orchestral stuff so yeah yeah those three leap to mind so i we're finding out that um as we, as we force ourselves into the music world um, that everything is so interconnected with certain things. So I remember seeing you in Brooklyn. This is, God, I'm going to guess 2008. Okay. And I remember, you know, I loved you, me and my friend Adam, shout out. He went to the show with me and we were vibing out. And then whatever, flash forward, was watching the factory oh, yeah was that yes a factory yeah, yeah i remember that show yeah and i remember th this is a long convoluted story but flash forward youth and revolt i saw it with my friend adam who is a movie geek and we were like this is a great score come to find out you did that fucking score right no, i didn't do the score no. You didn't do the score? No, I didn't do the score. Oh. I, it's my song, When You Love Somebody, is like the sort oh, of okay. tactic song. But like, um, no, I didn't actually do the score. I, I wish I could remember offhand who did that score, but it was not me. Oh, wow. So you just got plucked one of your songs. Yeah. Okay. And then, but you did a, you did other scores, right? I've done 10, 10 movie scores. Um, I haven't That's done awesome. one in a while. I sort of went through a little stage of doing that and have been doing it less just like, just cause I've been like bonkers with touring and things like that. But like, uh, yeah. Um, I love that stuff. I, I was a more of like a movie person than I was a music person growing up. And I thought maybe I would be like a director or a screenwriter or something. So it, it always felt like a little bit of a full circle thing for me to do that. We are also a movie big movie geeks. And, um, I don't like asking the question, what's your favorite movie? So I'll say, what's the movie you can watch over and over and over again? Jaws. Yes. Oh man. Probably is my favorite movie too. Yeah. I mean like those super like bedrock movies, like Jaws, Goodfellas, like perfect movies, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so this is proving my point that it's either a matrix or we're just, you know, forcing our hand on the universe because we had the director of Jaws, a little fellow named Steven Spielberg. We had his daughter on the pod last episode. Yeah, Sasha. I know her. Yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah. She's really, really nice. Oh, she was such a sweet. Her and Abby, I was just like, I'm out. Yeah. You guys, Sasha, you guys be best friends. She's super cool and makes really cool music too. Very cool music. Yeah. Very cool. So very funny. Of course, she, of, of, Abby, of course he knows her. <laughs> wild 
what's next? What kind of conditioner to use on that hair? You know, I just got, um, cause I'm trying to like do my part and not, uh, like not use too much plastic. So I got like this bar conditioner that I've been using that I can't remember the name of it, but it's pretty good. Does it like lather? How does, what's the logistics? Yeah, it sort of lathers. You got to kind of like scrub it on your head, but, um, yeah. Um, but I don't really, I don't have like a strong hair care regimen either. No, but your, hair, your hair looks great. Thank you. Happy. Thanks. <laughs> Does it have any parabens? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what burner on the stove are you using first? Ooh, that's a really good one. Um, honestly, it could be either of the front ones, really. It's hard. Either to the front. Yeah. And then what if you and your lady are making two different things? Um, it doesn't matter. Like what, I don't know, whoever, whoever started. Whoever got, yeah. got there first. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. And then, okay. Your utensil drawer, what order is it in? We don't have a utensil. Well, we do have a utensil drawer that's kind of like, but we actually have our nice like forks actually live in this like little utensil basket on the counter. Oh. Um, and then the utensil drawer is, is a bit more of like a mixed bag of, of things. So there is not an order to it. Okay. Are the forks, are the sharp tongue, that's what they're called, right? What are they called? Prong? The tines. Yeah. Tines. There you go. Tines, are they up or down? Just so you know, it's the forks. Yeah. Yeah. Have you stuck yourself on them though? No. Like if you're not looking and you. Nope. I'm pretty good. <laughs> Welcome to Bothering the Band. We. <laughs> That's how I know I'm doing a good job. If Abby's shaking her head and like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> okay. When you, you mentioned we eat a little bit ago and again, this is another one. I have the note. I don't know how to ask it. Growing up, did you ever smoke or see someone smoking out of the little cigarette looking pipes? Remember those? Yeah, one hitter. Yes. Okay. I called them a bat when yeah, I was a, a child. Yeah, yeah. A hitter bat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they had the painted, they were metal. They got super hot they at the end. Painted, and they were painted like a look to look like a Marlboro medium or something like that. And uh, yeah, I saw many people smoking those and I saw myself smoking those as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the point? Like, is it so you don't look like you're smoking? Well, weed? like that, why'd they make it look like a cigarette? That is supposedly a thing, I guess, which makes sort of no sense. But like the point of an actual one hitter is that it's like, um, it only gives you a tiny bit of weed. So it's a, it's one hit rather than having to like, it's like, it's like for, uh, it, like it not passing around a joint or something where you just like, you just want one hit. It's for me when I used to bartend and I'd go in the back and hit it once. Yeah. But, but yeah. why does it have to look like a cigarette? That's a good question. So the manager of the restaurant, so the manager of the Don Pablo's didn't get mad at me. Yeah. But like, it's not like they're not going to smell they the knew. part of it. So yeah. That's the <laughs> tell. It was shitty. Why doesn't your cigarette ever stay lit? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Or why does your cigarette never go down either? Yeah. Why is there seeds in your cigarette? Yeah. Oh, because I'm poor and it's 1996. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Yeah. That is fun. Man, you're, do, you know what's crazy is there's someone out there still making them. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's wild. I have one. Yeah. I love it. Um, I love it. And you don't need it in L.A. anymore. No, in LA, you can just go to the store. I don't really actually smoke that much weed anymore. Like I, I like to get the like, um, like, you know, regular weed is like 25% THC, like, and, uh, every once in a while I'll go get one that's like 7% or something. It's like mm -hmm. the, the like Coors light of, uh, marijuana, but for the most part, I don't, um, it doesn't, doesn't like work for me anymore. I am a hundred percent right there with you. When I was in LA last time, went to a dispensary and I was like, listen, I told the woman there, I was like, I don't want to think about how the universe was like created. Yeah. I just want to like do the dishes. Yeah. And you want music to sound good. And yeah, yeah. that 7% stuff is really, really light. So it's nice. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I I'll do the gummies, you know, even the light, like the super low milligram gummies. I'll, I'll micro dose those gummies. Yeah. Those, I can't do those. Like I, they, um, even the low ones make freak me out. Like, yeah, I don't know why. You got some good ones today. Um, so if let's picture, let's all of us picture a centaur, half man, half horse. Where's the dick? Is it up by the front where the man is, or is it in the horse part? Nope, it's in the horse part. This is amazing. <laughs> they should, you should draw, Abby, you can draw, you should draw a centaur with it in the man part. No, that is just disturbing. That's the, uh, that's the next uh, bothering the band flyer. When we go back to LA, that'll be the flyer. <laughs> okay, so you were nominated for a Grammy for this. Leads me to the the horse thing. It's super dumb connection. Bonnie Light Horseman. Yeah, love, 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 love. Nominated for a Grammy. That's pretty wild. Or a couple, right? Two. Yeah, two Grammys. Two time Grammy loser. Um, I like to say, and yeah, that was totally wild. Not really something I ever expected to happen. Did you go to the ceremony or is it just like, no, it was like pandemic time. So it was, um, but I was, and I actually was like, you could only be one person could like accept. And so Aeneas, my bandmate, she's already won like 10 million awards, you know, like with Tony's and things like that. So Josh and I were going to be the, uh, speech givers, you know, like for each of the respective categories, but you know, we were all separate. So I was just sort of like sitting at at my dining room table in like a, you're sort of in like a zoom chat weight room almost. And if you win, they like fly you into the ceremony or something. And it was weird. I was like, if I never get nominated again, I didn't get to go, go to the ceremony and do the thing, but it was still totally cool. And you know, it looks good on a bio or something now, I guess. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool to put it in front. We'll put it for the description. We'll put, you know, two time Grammy nominee, two time Grammy and then the little TM with the Grammy too, the little trade. Yeah, absolutely. And we've had a Grammy winner on the pod and, but it was one of those buried categories and she won, but she didn't get an award. She got a certificate is what it, she showed us. And so it was like, she has the title, but not the actual gramophone now i have a little even if you just get nominated you get a, i have two certificates so so this is a personal favor and you just you can say no as well can you play buffalo and deer at the nashville show uh maybe um that would i would have to teach that to the band um but that's like that proves that you've been around a long time with this band because that's a that is a an old old deep cut a D old deep cut, man, but that song just it, that we, we talk about this a lot on the pop uh, music as a time machine. And that song immediately brings me back to New York city, you know, a million years ago and just being young and dumb. And man, that song hit still. Like I was jamming out to that recently. Again, I was like, man, I got him. I'm going to ask him. We're going to the show. I don't think I've heard that song in 17 years or something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, well, that's a that's a good segue. Where's the weirdest place you've heard your music? Oh, I have a good one for this, and I can't remember now. Um, someone hit me up that it was playing in like a like a Super America gas station or something recently, which is like. Not that weird, but like, it's just not gas station music. It's just like kind of a normal, like road trip, big kind of truck stop gas station, just jamming fruit bats, which is weird. Um, Delta Airlines had it on their like pre, you know, like when you come in and there's kind of music quietly playing, we were on that mix for a minute, but that's really not that weird. I don't know. I haven't that's, heard. That's, yeah. I call yeah. that one weird. Yeah. And then uh, like one time before, like a, it was like an NFL on NBC or something before like a bears game, they jammed it. Um, so, but again, that's just like, yeah, 
those are just like locations and TV. I wish that I could say somewhere really weird, but the the Vatican, um, which is not true. <laughs> but that would be the weirdest one. Um, so the Bears game, did you know that was going to happen or did you just get like a bunch of text messages? I got a bunch of text messages. And I like, I, I, I like to watch NFL games every once in a while too, but like I, I like wasn't watching that one. And uh, yeah, um, I got, a, I got a bunch of text messages, especially like from my like family and stuff who are all a bunch of bears. Uh, do you still follow bulls or bears or anything like that? Yeah, kind of like lightly. Um, like, um, yeah, the bears have been bad. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I like, I follow sports lightly. I think that's for the best. Yeah. Um, uh, my love of sports, obviously I'm an Orlando magic fan. Abby is as well. Um, Abby, sorry, is also a Packers fan. Uh, so yeah, it's fine. I don't, Packers are like of all the rivals of the teams that I like, they're the least hateable. I mean, they're like a, the smallest market in all of professional sports. It's like a publicly yeah. owned. There's, there's kind of nothing to hate about the Packers really. Yeah. The bears are more the douchebags in that rivalry, but like, I'm just from Chicago and I love the bears and like the 85 bears were like, when I was a kid, it was like, they were like cartoon characters and they had a number one hits hit rap song too. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. So are you a Cubs or white Sox fan? Cubs. My family's North, like deep North side. Like, so yeah. Very cool. Very cool. My mom was born and raised in Rockford. And so I grew up, um, I, the Cubs are like still up there for me. I'll like yeah. try to catch a Cubs game. Yeah. It's so Wrigley's just so fun uh, to go. So magical. I love that. They still have the troughs. If you go to the one bathroom, it's magical. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, Nashville, April 27th. Somehow can we snag a photo with you? Even yeah. if it's like this. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Will you be selling merch? Um, I mean, I won't be personally selling the merch. No, yeah, yeah. That... I, yeah, there'll be merch. Okay, cool. I love t-shirts. So does Abby. We're gonna buy a t-shirt. Yeah. Awesome. Uh we end every episode with a song from the artist or the guest. What what, what do you want us to end this episode with? Oh, I mean, you should end with whatever one of the new songs. I don't it doesn't really matter to me. So you, can you tell us anything about new new music, new album? Like, is it going to be a full release or? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a full on record. I think it's I think it's number. Uh, well, depending on how you count my records, I think it's number ten. Like sort of officially. So um, yeah, it's my tenth. It's called "The River Running to Your Heart." Um, yeah, it's uh, and the title says it all. It's kind of a it's a laser beam aimed at your emotions and and uh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay, so should we do We Used to Live Here, It All Comes Back, Russian River Valley, Waking Up in Los Angeles? That's what's out on. on yeah, do, uh, right do now. Russian River Valley. Okay. Okay. Um, Abby's favorite question of each episode Do you follow us on Instagram? Do I follow you on Instagram? Bothering the band. On no, Instagram. but I will. I don't really use Instagram that much. Um, I, most of my Instagram posts are me apologizing for not using it or either come to my show or apologizing for not using Instagram enough. It's totally acceptable. We, this but is, I'll, I'll seek you out and follow you. Cause you'll probably like tag me or something at some point. We, yes, we, we definitely will. We already follow you. Everyone follow fruit bats, fruit underscore bats on Instagram. This is our way of shoehorning in the promo part. Yeah, you know, buried in the episode so no one can yeah. fast forward in the beginning, that type of shit. Also, self promotion, it's a whole thing. We want this podcast is just so we can befriend our favorite musicians. That's it. That's good. <laughs> That's it. Um, if you could interview, if you could bother any musician, live or dead, who would you bother in the same vein as bothering the band? And what dumb question would you ask them? I mean, I think ultimately I pro there's only two Beatles left and I'd love to talk to a Beatle, like R Ringo or Paul, like Paul or, or Ringo, you know? Um, 
But I don't know. I would have to think about the dumb question. I don't, I'm not really sure. The centaur question is what you yeah. should ask. Yeah, I'll just recycle that centaur question. Hey, Sir Paul, <laughs> where, where's the centaur's dick? Uh, wouldn't it be great, though, if he had it in the in the chamber, just ready to go? He's like, it's obviously in the front. Yeah, I did. I answered that it's it's on the horse. You definitely did. You definitely yeah. did. <laughs> okay, so uh, besides the new album, what what is the and the tour? Obviously, what does the future hold for Eric and Fruit Bats? Besides teleporting everyone, I just uh, uh yeah, a bunch of shows, and then um, I'll, I'm gonna continue to write songs and make records as long as people uh, continue to ask me to do that. So, yeah. Okay, so we'll make a note like when you follow us on Instagram, like every. I don't know, six months, be like, I hope you're making new music. I probably I would answer probably yes if you asked me that. Yeah. Yes, I am. With like an emoji of like the post office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So when's the last time you were at a post office? Um, That's a good question. The last few things I've mailed, I've ended up doing UPS. Um, But like I have a local post office that I was at not too long ago but uh, i don't know two months ago oh that makes me real happy yeah nice yeah well eric d john eric don johnson johnson <laughs> <laughs> aka fruit bats that's our program and from both of us we can't thank you enough and and as you saw we we're massive fans and we appreciate your time we appreciate your decades of music and we appreciate you answering our very, very embarrassingly dumb questions. I enjoyed it. Yeah, man. And then uh, keep in touch and we'll see you in Nashville. Sounds good. I'll see you there. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. See y'all. See you, Thanks. man. Bye. Thanks.